Solomon. Um, in the early hours of this investigation, were you receiving video footage from the school and, in fact, stills from the school from Detective Baldessari? Yes, I was. And based on um, some of the different um, clothing and headgear that we've just been through with Ms. Regan, um, did that create any confusion for you? Yes, it did. What was that? Uh, it gave the appearance that uh, there may have been more than one person involved. Now, let me just give you a limited instruction, ladies and gentlemen, that you can uh, consider that answer as it relates to um, uh, police conduct and police knowledge at the time in question. Detective Sullivan, over the course of, let me ask you this, the first time that Danvers police learned anything about a Philip Chisholm was when his mother called, is that correct? That's correct. And the first time anyone at Danvers police learned anything about Colleen Ritzer being missing or injured was when um, people started looking for her at the school. That's correct. At any time during the afternoon, were there any reports to the Danvers police regarding um, people walking around the school behaving strangely? Objection. Um, overruled. No, ma'am. In fact, were there any calls regarding any activity at Danvers High School until that 6.30 call from Diana Chisholm? No, ma'am. If we could have the educational... Do you want any instruction on that at all, Ms. Regan, on those last two answers? No. Okay. Now, can we go down to the next few? Um, so you're familiar, and I think we've talked a lot about the three stairwells that are marked in purple. Is that correct, uh, yes, Detective Sullivan? Yes, ma'am. Um, and each of those stairwells, one at the top, two in the middle, and three at the bottom, have a doorway at the bottom. Is that correct? Correct. And um, one can exit through any of those three doorways. Is that correct? That's correct. Can one enter through any of those three doorways? You can... Um you can enter the um, doorways, uh, the, the middle doorway, doorway two, has handles on the exterior, so if it were unlocked, you could open it and go in. Um, doorway one and three. Detective Sullivan, with respect to the outside doors at stairwell one and stairwell three, do those doors have exterior handles? They do not. Unless someone is holding the door open, is there any way to open the door from the outside? There is not. I have nothing further. Okay. Any recross? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Next witness, please, Ms. McDougall. Call Kevin Ebert, and Your Honor, could you just see him while he's coming in? Sure. Yeah, uh, be um, captured on camera. Can you come forward? So would you raise your right, stop right there. Raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give and the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. You may be seated. Come Make yourself comfortable here. Put this piece is on for one moment. Good morning, sir. Make yourself comfortable. Have a seat, please. Thank you. Um, so I allowed a uh, motion in this case that only lets witnesses be in the courtroom uh, when they're testifying until the evidence part of the trial is over. And witnesses can't talk about their testimony with other witnesses and can't allow other witnesses to talk about their testimony with them. All right? Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Hebert. In a loud, clear voice, can you state your first and last name? Kevin Hebert. Can you spell your first and last name? K-E-V-I-N. H-E-B-E-R-T. How old are you, Mr. Hebert? I'm 18 years old. And what city or town did you grow up in? Danvers, Massachusetts. Did you attend the Danvers schools? I did not. How were you schooled? I was homeschooled. And did you participate, however, in Danvers athletics? I did. 
What sports did you play? I ran cross country in the fall and ran winter track and spring track. Now, <coughs> um, Mr. Heber, do you belong to a particular congregation or church? I do. And what church is that? Uh, North Shore Bible Church, um, and they are Grace Brethren. I'm sorry? Uh, they are Grace Brethren. That's Grace the Brethren. Okay, I just didn't hear you. Okay. And I didn't hear North Shore what church? North Shore Bible Church. Okay, thank you. And um, does the church have a physical location, a building, or a, a place of worship? Uh, yes. Where is that? Essex. Um, now, how have you belonged to that church for your whole life? I have not. Okay. How old were you when you joined? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I think it's been about 10 years. Okay. Okay. Now, <coughs> well, let me ask you this. What are you doing now? What am I doing now? Yes. Uh, I'm in New York at a discipleship program. Are you doing mission work for your uh, church at this time? Or have you been doing it this fall? Uh, not for my church. Okay. Now, sir, um, do you also belong, or did you belong when you were living here, to a youth group? I did. And is the youth group, how is the youth group sponsored? How is it sponsored? Uh, it's located at another church, not my church. Um, the church is First Presbyterian Church in Ipswich. Okay. And does that youth group gather from people from a variety of different churches nearby? Yes. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Hebert, do you know um, Philip Chisholm? I do. When did you first meet Philip Chisholm? <coughs> Uh, it was August of 2013. And how did you meet Philip Chisholm? I met him through a family in my church. Okay. And um, did you know where Philip Chisholm, let me ask you this, had Philip Chisholm been living in Danvers or was he new to Danvers? He was new to Danvers. Did you know where he was coming from? Uh, Tennessee, I believe. Did you, and um, how much time did you spend with Philip Chisholm in August and September in the beginning of October of 2013? Uh, it was usually at church on Sundays, um, and sometimes I would see him during the week when he was at soccer practice and I was at cross-country practice. Sometimes I'd run into him during that. And how would you describe your relationship with Philip Chisholm in the fall of 2013? Uh, it was... I only knew him for two and a half months, uh, so it was it was still our relationship was still building, uh, but it was getting stronger. And building towards what? What kind of a relationship? Just a close friendship. Now, um, how long? You said you would see him on Sundays at church. How um, long is a typical Sunday service for you? Uh, eight forty-five, uh, nine fifteen a.m. to. Uh, about noon. And is it um, sitting and listening, or how does how does um, the fellowship work? Uh, there's a lot of sitting and listening, but after the service is over, there's interaction, and that's usually when I talk to them. How big um, is the congregation in Essex? Uh, right now, it's about a hundred uh, members. And was it that big in the fall of 2013? It was closer to 80 to 90. So relatively small. Yes. Would you say you knew everyone in your congregation pretty well? Yes. Now, um, with respect to the youth group that you belong to, did um, Philip Chisholm participate in that? He attended once. Okay. And at whose um, invitation did he attend? Mine. And um, what do you, how does um, the youth group meetings work? Uh, we meet together Sunday night, um, and... We would have time of fellowship or just hang out with each other and talk to each other. And then after that, we would sing some worship songs. And then we would have a lesson from one of the leaders. And then we would all go to uh, a restaurant in Beverly. And you indicated that Philip Chisholm came along for that on one occasion? Just one occasion. Do you remember about when that was, meaning August, September, October? I believe it was in September, end of September. And <coughs> during, about how many people were at that uh, event? I don't remember. Big group, small group? Probably around 30. That's the average number. And did you um, interact specifically with Philip at that event? I did, yes. And did, um, did he participate in 
the evening for that. Yes, yeah. Now, um, in addition, Mr. Hebert, do you belong or do you attend or did you attend a men's Bible study? I did. And how and what, which, um, which group is that affiliated with, the youth group or your church? Uh, my church, North Shore Bible Church. Okay. And how often does a men's Bible study meet? It was meeting every Monday night. And did Philip Chisholm ever accompany you, to you for that? Yes. Who would you go with? Uh, my, my father would usually drive me with my brother, and then we would usually drive Philip there, too. How often did Philip attend men's Bible study? Uh, it was inconsistent. Some weeks he could go, some weeks he couldn't, usually because homework. Okay. He wouldn't attend. Do, have, do you have any estimate of how many times he accompanied you and your dad and brother to men's Bible study? I do not. More than once? Yes. And Anyone in this video? I see myself and I see another student, Josh Spencer. I'm sorry, and which one is you? What are you wearing? I'm wearing the Red Sox hat, um, wearing all black clothes. And who are you clothes. now talking to? Uh, that's Philip. That's Philip Chisholm. And now, Mr. Hubert, correct me if I'm wrong, you can't see in this too, but you're not wearing any shoes, is that correct? That's correct. Why aren't you wearing any shoes? I had taken them off after practice. Now, um, Mr. Hebert, did you see Philip again after that? I think it's about a 35-second um, encounter that afternoon. I've never seen him since. Okay. Did you notice anything about the condition of his clothing when you spoke to him that afternoon? Can you repeat that? Sure. Did you notice anything about the condition of his clothing? Uh, nothing unusual. Nothing stood out to me. How would you describe Philip's demeanor that afternoon? I, I saw him approaching me uh, from a distance. Um, he was looking down at the ground. He kind of seemed a little bit just down in the dumps, I guess you could say. Um, once I started talk to him, uh, talking to him, he started acting like his normal self, and I had a completely normal conversation with him. What was the conversation about? Uh, he, I invited him to youth group again um, to go that Sunday night, and. We also mentioned something about how his phone uh, was out of minutes and he wasn't able to text me because I had texted him before. Okay. And what did he say about going to youth group that Sunday night? He said he could go. He said he wouldn't have too much homework. Okay. okay. And um, then he, did he mention where he was going or did you not even ask? I didn't ask. He didn't say anything. I have nothing further for Mr. Hebert. No questions. All right. Thank you, sir. You're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commonwealth calls Andrew Giacomo. Is this mine? No. And you'll just let me know if you could. I will. So would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give in the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. So to make yourself comfortable, but this space is on for one moment. Sure. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you very much, sir. In a motion to sequester witnesses in the case until the trial is over, all that means is that you can only be in the court when you're testifying. You can't talk about your testimony with other witnesses. Well, let them talk about their testimony with you until the evidence part of the trial is over. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Can you state your first and last name? Uh, sure, it's Andrew Giaquinto. Can you spell them? A N D R E W G I A Q U I N T A. Sir, how old are you? I'm 31. And what do you do for work? I am a systems engineer at Hewlett Packard. And are you married? I am. To whom are you married? Sarah Giaquinto. And what does your wife Sarah do for work? Uh, she is a math, math teacher at Danvers High School. Mr. Giaquinta, did you know Colleen Ritzer? I did. How did you know her? 
uh, primarily through my wife, Sarah. Um, she was a friend and, uh, as I just said, a colleague of hers at Danvers High School. So I knew her sometimes outside of uh, school through social gatherings or when my wife was together with her. Sir, um, what city or town were you living in in October of 2013? Peabody, Massachusetts. And on the evening of October 22nd, were you and your wife home? Yes. At some point, without going into anything that was said, did you take a phone call? Uh, she did. I did not. Okay. And after that phone call, um, what did you do? Uh, we went to Danvers High School to look for uh, Colleen. And how long does it take to get from your home, in, or did it take at that time to get from your home in Peabody to Danvers High School? Somewhere around 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. When you arrived at Danvers High School, what, if anything, did you observe uh, in, around the school grounds? Uh, we saw Colleen's car there, um, but otherwise there was no sign of her. And <coughs> were you ultimately able to get into the school building? Yes, once uh, the principal, Sue, uh, was arrived, we were able to get inside the high school. And what role, if any, did you play at that time in the school building? Uh, at that time in the school building, we kind of just went to look around classrooms to see if we could further find the locations of Colleen. And ultimately, did you begin to look outside of the school building? Yes. And can you describe for the jury what um, search you conducted at the perimeter of the school building? Sure. Um, myself, uh, Todd Butterworth, and the police officer, Stephanie, I believe was her name, um, we began walking around the outside of the school just to look for any sign of Colleen at that point. Um, there had been mentioned that maybe there were some clothes around, so we started looking along the side of the school primarily and then um, kind of just worked our way around the outside of the school uh, along the woods line. And when you say... You could, uh, the green button will um, Can you just show us the areas where you were looking that night? Sure. Uh, first, um, I would mentioned we looked just along the edge of the school here, and then we worked our way around um, the edge of the woods line here and proceeded across the field, went around to right around here, and at that point, um, uh, Mr. Butterworth and Stephanie had moved along to this side, and I uh, was around where the, it's like a path entrance to the woods, and there are some rocks there, and that's uh, where we first uh, or I first found um, sign of Colleen between the rocks, um, stuffed in between some leaves. Uh, we found what was her purse. And showing you exhibit 23, Mr. Diaquinta, is that depict the area where you located Colleen with her purse? Yes, it does. Can you just show the jury with the laser pointer where you found her purse? Sure, uh, just right between two of the rocks among some leaves, but not completely buried. Thank you. Um, <coughs> and what did you do when you first saw the purse? Uh, I picked it up. I pulled it out of the leaves there, um, trying to determine what it was. Was it just trash or uh, something? And at that point, I had called. Um, I yelled over to Todd and Stephanie. They were still within voice distance, and they came back. And at that point, we opened it up and saw um, I think it was a pay stub or something and then that identified that it was Colleen's purse. And to whom, if anyone, did you turn over the purse at that point? The police officer. And just to be clear, this is the Aquinta showing you what was marked as Exhibit 24. Do you recognize that bag? I do. That was the bag. Uh, after that, we started walking into the woods a little bit and just looking through the immediate area underneath the tree line um, for any further uh, pieces of Colleen's uh, clothes or anything like that. Um, and Todd, uh, Mr. Butterworth, uh, called me over and he had found on the ground um, some white gloves that had blood on them as well as when we looked in the immediate vicinity, there were also some, looked like some paper towels or other uh, remnants, and um, at that point, uh, we then uh, spoke to, told Stephanie, and um, vacated from the area. 
And from that point on, did you have any active involvement in any searching? I did not. Thank you. I have nothing further. No questions. All right. Thank you, sir. The Commonwealth calls um, Lida Parsons. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? You may be seated. Good morning. It's been a uh, motion I've allowed relative to witnesses in the case. Witnesses may only be in the courtroom when they're testifying until the evidence part of the trial is over. You can't talk about your testimony with other witnesses, so let them talk about theirs with you until the evidence part of the trial is over. Thank you. Sure. Good morning, ma'am. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Lida Parsons. And how do you spell your first and last name? L-I-D-A-P-A-R-S-O-N-S. And Ms. Parsons, how are you employed? I am employed by AMC Theatres. And what is your um, current position with AMC Theatres? I am the general manager of the Liberty Tree Mall Danvers location. How long have you worked for AMC Theatres? 29 years. And were you in your current position um, on October 22nd of 2013? I was. The movie theater that you manage, where specifically is it located? It's located inside the Liberty Tree Mall, about halfway from between Buffalo Wild Wings and the food court. And how many um, theaters or how many movies are showing at one time at your movie theater? 20. And what are your hours? Uh, we open generally at 10.30 till uh, about 11 o'clock at night. Now, Ms. Parsons, as part of your duties as the manager, are you aware of a video system or surveillance system that you have in your movie theater? Yes, I am. And, what, um, and is that video system maintained in the normal course of business? Yes, it is. And how many, which portions of your theater are covered by video cameras? The box office area, the concession cashier terminals, the ticket taker area, the lobby uh, in the center of the lo uh, building, and there's a view down each of the camera, uh, each of the wings. Okay. Are there actual cameras at all in the theaters themselves? No. And um, can you describe for the jury, please, what the setup is of where the actual theaters are? The auditorium? Yes. Um, once you enter on the storefront side um, through the box office, you go past the concession stand and then uh, towards the rear of the, the building, there are two wings. There are 12 theaters down the left side wing and eight theaters down the right side wing. And how does the ticket taking work with respect to those two wings? Uh, generally, we have one, depending on peak volume, we will have one on each side, um, but one ticket taker would tear the ticket, direct the customer to the theater number that they had a ticket for. So if one, um, if the ticket taker wasn't paying attention, would you necessarily have to go to the movie you bought a ticket for? No. Now, ma'am, on after October 22nd of 2013, were you asked to pull footage from your review footage and pull footage from your theater for the police? Yes. And did you um, pull footage that depicts what appears to be Philip Chisholm in your movie theater the afternoon or evening of October 22nd? Yes. Um, and does that footage fairly and accurately depict uh, that footage that was captured of Philip Chisholm in your theater. Yes. I'd ask you to be marked as the next three exhibits here. All right. Probably as A, B, and C. No
Andy and Steve so much. Sir, if we could play the video clips. Sure. Members of the jury, I remind you'll have all of the exhibits with you in the jury room when you're deliberating. Just before we start playing, um, Ms. Parsons, can you uh, explain to us what this clip we're about to see, what area of the theater it depicts? It depicts the rear lobby after the concession stand, but before the ticket taker, uh, where the restrooms, the view is uh, into the men's and ladies' rooms. The men's room's on the left, the ladies' room's on the right. Okay. This is the area beyond the ticket taker that heads to the rear entrance of the building. Okay. So if you could enter or exit through this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you don't need to buy a ticket until you actually want to go into a movie theater. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And what is this um, footage depict? This is our box office area. And is this the first area you would hit if you were entering from the mall? Yes. Yes, it's a credit card receipt. Um, from where? Um, from the theater for one t purchase of one ticket. Does it say what movie it's for? It says it's for Gravity. Does it indicate a time for that movie? It does not. Okay. And does anything about your credit card receipt indicate whose credit card was used? It lists the, vis uh, the type of credit card and then the name. And what's and the name? The name is Ritzer. Colleen. Ms. Parsons, um, based on your review of the footage uh, and pulling of the footage for the police that day, do you know, do you know approximately what time um, Mr. Chisholm is first seen at your movie theater? I don't remember for sure. Okay, let me ask you this. Are the times reflected on the videos themselves? Yes. Okay. I have uh, nothing further for this witness, Your Honor. Okay. 
Which witness is this, please? It's mine. Um, can I, I use the system, Mr. Siebel? Sure, sure. Thank you, ma'am. Come on, call Brian Pass. <coughs> Is uh, Sarah Jean Puente testifying today, Ms. McDougall? No, you're So would you please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give in the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. You may be seated. Come right up. Sure. Have a seat, sir. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, sir, uh, there's an uh, order I've allowed in the case that witnesses can only be in the courtroom when testifying until the evidence part of the trial is over. You can't talk about your testimony with other witnesses or let them talk about this with you until the evidence part of the trial is over. Absolutely. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Peck. In a loud, clear voice, can you please introduce yourself to the jury? Yes, my name is Brian Peck, and I am from Beverly, Massachusetts. I work for BJ's Wholesale Club. How do you spell your first and last names? Uh, B R I A N. Last name P E C K. And what is your, um, what do you do for BJ's Wholesale Club? I'm a general manager. And are you a general manager of any particular BJ's? Uh, yes, the BJ's Wholesale Club in Danvers, Massachusetts. And where is the BJ's Wholesale Club in Danvers located? It's located on 6 Hutchinson Drive. Where is that? <laughs> it is just off of 128 next to, um, if you guys are familiar with the area, uh, Market Basket Plaza. Okay. And what is the, um, where is the BJ's with respect to the Liberty Tree Mall? Uh, it's about a quarter mile east. So if you get on to um, Endicott Street and you're coming out of the mall, you'd take a left up over 128. If you were on Endicott Street, how would you get to your um, store? Um, it depends on from if you're coming from the mall, I presume. You would take a left, go up Endicott Street, go through two sets of lights. At the third set, you would take a left. Okay. And fair to say your um, wholesale club is sort of set back from Endicott Street? Yes, okay. yes. Now, can you explain for anyone who may not know how um, BJ's Wholesale Club works in terms of how one makes purchases there? Um, it, it is what it sounds like. It's a club, so you literally have to purchase a membership to be able to buy merchandise uh, within the club. Okay. Is there a way to purchase merchandise if you are not a member? Yes, uh, there is a caveat. It, uh, you, there is a 15% service charge for buying product as a non-member. But to go about that process, you need to go to the membership desk um, and, and ask for a, a, a pass. Okay. If you are a member, do you receive something to denote your membership? Yes. You Would get you a card receive? with a picture and a barcode on it that needs to be scanned before every purchase. Can you make a purchase at BJ's Wholesale Club without the cashier scanning a card like that or no. a pass? I'm sorry. No. Uh, I'm sorry. No. And is there any, um, what, when you first walk into your BJ's Wholesale Club, how do you enter the store? Um, you would, once you, you enter Fourier, you take a left. Um, there is a, what you would call a, a beeper that would uh, sense anything coming into the store. And there's also a um, AP agent that is on the right-hand side of the store. What's an AP agent? Uh, assets protection. Okay. And are you greeted by anyone when you enter a BJ? Yes. The asset protection agent will greet you as you come in. Do you need to show anything or do you just get a greeting? Uh, just a greeting. Okay. And um, when you exit your store, is there any check on your exit? Yes. You uh, exit that AP manager on the way out will look at your receipt and compare it to the product that you have and punch a hole in it to make sure that 
you know, everything that you've purchased, everything that you have in your possession. And do you exit through the same entrance you enter? Um, you, you, same entrance, different side. Okay. Um, and the AP manager is standing there to check your receipt? Uh, the AP agent is, agent, yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do you have video surveillance, or did you in October of 2013 have video surveillance in your store? We do. And is Indeed. that kept in the normal course of business by BJ's Wholesale Club? Yes. Which areas of the store are depicted by surveillance? Front door, all the, all the registers, um, jewelry, electronics, and certain parts of the, the middle of the store. But you've indicated that the cashiers are also depicted, is that correct? Yes, okay. yes. And you've had an opportunity to view surveillance footage that the Wholesale Club provided to the police for October 22nd, 2013, is that correct? I have. And did that footage fairly and uh, accurately depict your school, your store, rather, on that afternoon? Yes. I ask that to Mark Jason next to show it. No objection. Admitted. Before we start this footage, Mr. Peck, can you orient us to what we're looking at? Uh, this would be the front entrance to uh, my wholesale club. Okay. And the AP person you mentioned, where would that person be standing? Right, well, right now it would be behind that red banner there. Okay. That's why the member with the card has stopped. Okay, okay. So you can't see the person depicted in this uh, image, is that correct? Not, not on this angle, no. Okay. If we could play the next piece of it. What part of the story is being depicted here? This is the, uh, this is the middle of the, the club, which is called the seasonal part. What kinds of items are kept in the seasonal part? Um, on this time of year, there would be, you know, there there would be gift items. There would be um, items for heating. Uh, there's one row for men's gifts, where a lot of times it's automotive uh, tools. Um, sometimes outdoor type of things like knives. And where are we? What are we looking at now, sir? Uh, we are looking at the opposite angle of the first uh, part of the video. This is the front door would be to the right, and members coming out would be coming to the right-hand side. And is that? And that is the attendant right there in red, at the bottom of the screen. So fair to say, uh, Mr. Chisholm just exited the entrance, is that correct? He did. On if the you exit opposite. the entrance, would anyone um, be checking your slip? Uh, should be. You shouldn't walk out to the left-hand side, and that's probably why the attendant turned her head. If I could just have one second to consult with that. Sure. I 
part that makes sure of the point. And finally, <coughs> if we could um, play the final clip. Now, Mr. Um, Peck, mm. if Mr. Chisholm had been seen at any of the cashier desks, would that have been depicted on video? Yes. And in fact, there's no video of him cashing out. Is that correct? There is not. Showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 7, Mr. Peck. Do you recognize that type of item? Yes. And what is it? It's a knife. And was your store May carrying... May I touch it? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Was your store carrying that product on October 22nd of 2013? It was. And where in the store was, were those items? <coughs> they were hung in the seasonal section. In the section where we saw Mr. Chisholm for over a minute? Correct. I have nothing further for Mr. Packman. No questions. Thank you, sir. Welcome, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to call call with Danielle Bedard. Okay. Uh, there'll be no uh, uh, video or still camera of this witness. This witness is a minor. 